Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to talk about fuses and also how to replace them in your digital multimeter. So let's begin with what a fuse is. So you've probably heard the term fuse, and maybe you've even seen a fuse, but it's basically it's an electrical safety device that prevents overcurrent. All right, and so all it is is a tiny little piece of metal that, well, it doesn't have to be tiny, but it's a piece of metal that is rated for some amount of current to flow through it. Okay, and what happens is that if you put too much current through it, it actually gets hot and it will actually burn. So it's basically a wire that's meant to burn and open. And so what happens is when it opens, obviously you can't have a circuit anymore. And so the current stops flowing in your circuit. And you put these in systems where you might have, you know, well, you put them in, safety is a really important thing in all circuits, uh, but you tend to put these in, in situations where either you have stuff that could damage other equipment or there might be personal harm, or in situations where the current may vary a lot and, you, and it's, it's likely you might have an overcurrent situation such as with a digital multimeter, okay? So it's, it's pretty easy to kind of hook this up to something that has a lot of current flowing because that's what you're doing. You never know what current you have and what if you happen to tie into something that had a bunch of current, you know, you, you want to protect, you want to destroy the multimeter, it'd be better to destroy these small little fuses. Uh, fuses are interesting because they, they have a rating. And so usually the most important one is like the current rating. So you'll have like a 500 milliamp or something like a 10 amp fuse. And what happens is that that's kind of the rating that if you go over that, this thing will pop. <clears throat> but they also have a kind of a current versus time behavior. So it doesn't, it wouldn't pop like if you got to 501 milliamps for just like a nanosecond, okay? So what they do is, as you go more and more, as you draw more and more current over the limit, then it burns faster and faster. So for example, if you went up to 501, it wouldn't pop right away. It would, it would might not pop for a long, long time. And so, and that's just to give you the, the option of like, if you happen to be, you know, this is time and this is current and this is 500, okay? If you were normally like this and all of a sudden you have a little blip, you don't need to blow the fuse, okay? Even though you went above the rating, you don't want to blow it for something like that because you were only over it for a little bit of time. And so what happens is that if you happen to be, you know, let's say you went way over it, then it would burn faster, okay? So let's say this was T and this was my 500 milliamp and this was I and here's my limit and you did go way way over it you put like two amps in there then even if it happened really quick it would burn okay so there's this current versus time behavior that allows them to burn uh, more quickly as the current increases okay so when it comes down down to types of fuses <clears throat> there are a whole lot of fuses out there uh, one of your the more common ones are what we call cartridge fuses and that's what you see in like uh, electronics okay so like basic electronics where, you know, like in your digital multimeter or maybe like, I don't know, maybe a computer or something like that. They also make surface mount ones. Uh, they also make ones that'll have like little wires coming out of them so you can actually solder them into breadboards. And uh, yeah, and those are those ones are rated, you know, they're hunting 500 milliamps, 250 milliamps, maybe a couple amps. Uh, and then you also have other classes of fuses such as automotive fuses. So automotive fuses are what protect your car's electrical system. And these fuses are probably ones that you're gonna interact with the rest of your life as long as we use cars to get around. So let's take a look at them. So most automotive fuses are in the, in the hood, okay? So next to the engine. But I'm gonna come in here, let me pop the hood of this. And some cars will actually have them right here in this panel right here. This truck doesn't, uh, but some of the some of the smaller vehicles will have something right here where it'll have some of the fuses in here. And you can actually pop a panel off right there and see fuses. But this one, all the fuses are held in the engine. So let's come out here and take a look. So let's open this hood. All right, so here's the engine. And here's your fuse box, okay? So right here, I notice this, that you're gonna see this symbol, which is a, it's actually a symbol for a blade fuse. And what you do is you just pop this little thing open 
and voila, here's all your automotive fuses that protect everything in your car. So what you're gonna notice is, first thing is you'll see all these numbers in here. These actually represent the amperage. So the little carrot, or little cartridge ones we were messing with were 250 milliamps. Well, these ones are, this stands for 10 amps and 20 amps, and you'll see things in here that are like 30 amps and all that sort of stuff. These huge ones are 40 amps. This box actually has a nice little grabber, so I can actually use this to grab these fuses. So if I grabbed one of them and took a look at what it looks like, uh, you'll notice it's a little fuse and you can actually see the uh, the element in there, the metal conductor. And if this thing blows, you'll see that thing will open. So you can visually see when these fuses are blown. And let me put that back in there. And you notice that they come in all shapes and sizes and you know they're all rated at, for various you know current ratings. But in an automotive fuse, what they do is they give you this key that sits right here and you can kind of look at the picture of where the fuse is and then you can actually go in here and actually look it up. So you'll see things for like your horn or your air conditioner. So whenever you're in your car and something electrical just goes completely out, it's usually a fuse. So if your horn just stops working, you just jump inside of this fuse box and figure out which one it is, look at it to see if it's blown, and then replace it. Now you might be wondering, why are we talking about fuses? This seems kind of random. Well, it turns out that when you first start taking current measurements, you have a tendency to blow the fuses in your multimeter. And this actually just happened to me also. So I was trying to take some current, current measurements with old trusty here, and I came along and I turned it on and I said, okay, I've got this circuit I'm expecting, you know, six to seven, you know, milliamps. And I came along here and all of a sudden, I said, all right, well, I'm gonna wire up here. I got my nine volts across basically three resistors in series, and I go ahead and tie on, and I'm sitting here seeing zero. And so I'm like, wow, that doesn't make any sense. And I change it to different ones. And I'm like, what is, what's happening here? And so this took, you know, luckily I had another multimeter. And so, <clears throat> <laughs> Luckily I had this thing right here. And so I'm like, well, let me check and see what's going on. So I turn on this buddy and I clip on with my current measurement and let's see if I get anything out of here. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, there's my 6.8 milliamps. So my other multimeter, there's something wrong with it. And <clears throat> since I'm measuring current, if your thing is just dead on arrival, it's a telltale sign that you have blown a fuse in here. And so if you look at this, you notice that there's two, two words down here called fused and fused. All multi most multimeters have uh, terminals down here where you're in one position for the lower current ratings and then one for the higher current ratings. So this one right here, uh, this position is where I measure two, you know, 2000 mi micro, 20 milli and 200 milli. And then if I wanna go to the 10 amp, then I have to actually move it over into another terminal. But what I believe happened was that the fuse for the smaller ones, the smaller measurements, blew. And so in this particular multimeter, you actually do have two fuses. One is a 500 milliamp rated one, and another one is a 10 amper. So let's look at how you actually replace these, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little trusty here, and I'm gonna pop off, I just pull this little, casing off of it let's throw that on the floor and if you flip it over what you're going to see is there's three screws on this particular one uh, all of them are a little bit different this one just happens to be there's one screw for the battery case and then there's two for the actual case so i'm going to go ahead and pop these little phillips screws out here and we'll take a look at what's inside okay so i got my two screws out and then what i'm going to do is i got to kind of try to open this thing up so I kind of pull it like this. Be careful when you do this because sometimes there's wires that are connected. So in this situation, I actually have wires that are connecting the battery, the nine volt battery that powers this thing to the actual printed circuit board that has all the components. And here's the inside of a multimeter. So one of the first things I notice is there's my fuses. I got two of them. And if I read what's happening down here, I see that this one is a 500 milliamp, 600 volt fuse. That's the one that might, may have blown. This one is a 10 amp, 600 volt fuse, okay? So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna use a uh, needle nose plier. Don't ever grab like this though, because you'll break the, you have a good chance of breaking the little cartridge on it. This one looks like it's a, instead of a glass cartridge, it looks like a ceramic one, uh, but it's still considered a cartridge fuse. So now I have this thing 
And one of the interesting things about this is that you can actually measure the resistivity of this <laughs> using the same multimeter because it actually doesn't use the fuse part to do uh, continuity. So if I come over here and I do continuity, uh, let's see, so I'm in continuity, there's my noise, and then if I come here, there's no continuity. Okay, and so it's like, oh, so this thing is blown. Now, you might wonder, well, how do you know? Well, here's a good fuse. So let me make sure I have continuity on a good fuse. And notice that the continuity works because it goes through that fuse, but it doesn't go on that one. So I have officially blown my 500 milliamp fuse and I need to replace it. Okay, so let's do, let's replace it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take this little guy, that guy needs to go in the garbage like immediately because you don't want that floating around, especially a ceramic one because in the glass tubes ones, you can actually see inside and see the wire and you'll notice it's broke. But this one you can't see. So I need that out of my life. So there, it's in the garbage. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here. Let's turn this thing off, boom. And I'll go ahead and open up old trusty again. Oh, be careful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert this fuse. This one is a 500 milliamp rated fuse, same size, same cartridge size. It's a glass tube one, but it's gonna work the same. So I put that buddy in there. And now I go ahead and seal up this little fella. So I'll go ahead and take my screws right here and boom, give it a couple cranks. I won't tighten them all the way, just, because, just in case I have to get in there again. And boom, boom. And let's now see if this guy's alive. All right, so I come back over to my circuit that I was trying to measure before I accidentally blew everything. And I'll go over to my 200 milli setting. And now let's take a look at this. And it's like, is it working? Boom, got it. 6.7 milliamps, okay? So life is very good right now. Now, here's the thing about it. Here's the caution for you. Why are you blowing your fuses? Well, it turns out that in a situation like this, one of the issues is that you have nine volts and you have it routed to all of your uh, all of your power rails. So it's really easy. The way you blow it the most often is that you accidentally touch power and ground when you're trying to do a current measurement. And that battery can provide enough current to actually blow the fuse. And so let me show you how much current I can get just right out of a raw battery. So if I just took this thing and I take it, and I'm only gonna do this for a second, let me, let me use my other meter here. Okay, so I got this, let's go power. And then I'm in milliamps, I wanna go uh, to the big, big one. So I'm gonna go over to here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just flat out touch this battery. And look at what I get. I get like a lot of amps, right? So it's like, 1.5, 1.5 amps. So I don't, I don't want to do this too long because I'm basically maxing out the uh, battery right there because in essence, the circuit that I built was this. So I built this circuit. I, I put a nine volter plus or minus nine volt across a fuse, okay? And you say, well, what is the current that flows? Well, it's like V is equal to IR, but the problem in a, with a battery is that, well, this resistance is basically zero. So you would think that current will go to infinity, but it absolutely will not come out of a battery. This can only pump out like up to about 1.6 amps before the whole thing just says, like the electrolyte and the anion and cation just can't keep up. But the key here is that I was able, that battery was able to provide 1.6 amps, which is enough to blow my 500 milliamp fuse. And so that means you have to be very careful when you are doing current measurements where you just accidentally are moving around here and you're trying to do current measurements. And if you accidentally touch, you're clipped onto ground and you just bump like the power supply right there, you will blow your 500 milliamp fuse. And that's what happens when you first start doing breadboarding. And it actually happens after you've done some breadboarding because it just happened to me and I've been doing this for 25 years. <laughs> okay, so that is it. That is fuses. That is what they are, how they work, and how to replace them in your DMM. See ya.